think, wow, that, that's amazing what he did there. And we, we, we forget to pull that which is amazing there and pull it into our present and then believe it for our future. And so today, as we are in his house, this is his place, we can believe that the goodness and the grace and the power that was so true as we read his word is, is here today and will be with us for tomorrow. We can believe that. We can stand on that. That's the promise of his word. Let's pray together. Father God, I thank you for each and every one today. I pray your grace upon their lives. And as James said, Lord, we don't know what people are going through today, but we can guarantee they're going through stuff. But God, as we work through stuff, I pray, Lord, that we would begin to move beyond the stuff and begin to live in the promise. And as we live in the promise, it takes care of the stuff. And so, God, I pray that today your power, your grace, your anointing, your spirit would speak to all our hearts and our lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All right, James, when are we going to see you again, brother? James goes off to uh, Bethel School of Ministry this week. And uh, James, I just want to tell you. It's been fun to watch the youth team just kind of mature this year, right? And we're splitting. And James, you've been a super huge part of that. Bless you, buddy. We're going to miss you, but we'll look forward to seeing you in December. Well, we'll see you at the end of service, but you know what I mean. We'll see you in December, too, all right? God bless you. Give James another hand as well. And Man, I think we set a record this morning for the amount of announcements that we have for you today. You can tell, though, it's the fall. It's getting back to, it, it's moving out of, you know, summer and where you, the, the routine is different. We're moving into our fall. And uh, just let me highlight a few things for you. This is in your connection today. This is just our ongoing snapshot for you to see, just to have a picture of where we are. And the picture is great news, is what I'm trying to tell you, is we budgeted for $520,000 worth of income to date. We are about 514 and some change in that regards. That's just within a few percentage points of where we are. And so what we've done is we've just adjusted backwards. In other words, we're running at, uh, at break even for the year. We're not ahead, but we're not behind. And so praise the Lord, because when you hit summer, well, we prayed a bold prayer in June where we said, Lord, we will, we, we will not go back 15%, which has been our pattern for the last 10 years. And folks, I'm here to say this morning, we have not gone back 15% through this whole summer. So praise the Lord. Wanted you to see that. Things are good, and uh, you are a part of that. So with that in mind, if you're at the end of the aisle, we're going to receive our morning tithe and offering. And uh, if you're at the end of the aisle, hold on to that bucket for just a moment. We're going to pray together, and then we will pass this and receive this today and start September. September. My goodness, hard to believe, huh? Incredible. All right, let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for every dollar and every dime today. Lord, we recognize that oh, without your grace and power on this, it's, it's just money. But Lord, when you come on this, then it's, 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 it's used for your kingdom purposes. It's, it's, it's purified. It's, 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 it's made good. And it's used in ways, Lord, that goes beyond that which we could ever imagine. And so, Father, we ask that every dollar, every dime today, every gift towards missions and, and all the other things and the generosity that you're building in our hearts and our lives, Lord, that would just uh, would serve your kingdom in an amazing way. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. You may pass that along the aisle today. A um, couple things you absolutely need to know about today. Uh, coming up for our block party this year, we're changing up our format of our block party. That is on October 31st. That is, that is Halloween evening, and we do uh, kind of the Halloween alternative. We call it block party. And this year, our theme is trunk or tree. And uh, we got some pictures of some of the things that uh, we are looking to do uh, over that event. I think they're coming up here. I, I, yeah, they are. We are hoping that you will participate with us and decorate your minivan or your car. Uh, however, here's the deal. We want to put on a great event. And because we represent, we're, we're a church and we represent the Lord, we don't want to do anything scary. So there's no like coffins and blood, all that kind of stuff. 
what we want to do is do a very positive thing here in our community. And we have spots for about 36 cars, all right? And we will provide all the candy for your cars. And we're also asking that not only would you consider having your car be a candy station, but you would decorate really, really well, all right? And, oh, SpongeBob, wouldn't he just die already, you know? Anyways. Um, <laughs> So not only do we want you to decorate your vehicle, but we would love for you to come up with a game booth idea that you could present out of your car. We're going to have a great time. And we know we're going to have a great time because your creativity and your participation with us will make this a fabulous event. And you can get more information out there. There's a, there's a volunteer form. There's a release form. We need to know if you want a vehicle spot, all that kind of stuff. And then, of course, we have flyers for you to give out. Uh, to friends and neighbors and the like, all right? Also coming up in September is something called the Good Sense Seminar. Good Sense Seminar is basically a three-hour, three-and-a-half hours uh, session, and it just is, it will dial in this whole idea of finances and budgeting in your life. Now, folks, I have been budgeting my whole entire life. And i got to tell you, budgeting isn't a whole lot of fun, but it is a very necessary function of what we have to do. And when you begin to understand the spiritual principles behind budgeting, um, it's better. I got to tell you, it's way better. And you get on a path that really uh, gets you going in a direction and it prioritizes what you need to be doing and what you need to be about. So that's coming up. You can sign up off your connection card today. That is this form right here that uh, many of you know about and you can sign up. And I would encourage you to do that. And if you're a young family, Absolutely. Every young family needs to be at this. It's just, it's, it's a, it's a no-brainer. You need, you need to come. All right. Uh, a lot has happened this summer, right? A lot's been going on. And uh, I've been away the last few weeks. I want to say thanks to John Gifford for filling in and Pastor Nick. I heard great stuff. I actually watched online uh, bits and parts of both those services just to make sure they weren't, you know, teaching heresy or anything like that. And, uh, John was a little off, but we've talked about that already, so we're good. We're all right. We're, we're, we're going to be okay. But uh, one of the other events that you probably saw in the newspaper uh, was, the, was the summit that was hosted here at the church, and a uh, full house. This looks a lot like our Saturday evening service, by the way. And um, I'll tell you, you can tell it's summer and Labor Day weekend. Man, last night's crowd, whew, whew, we needed some work there. But anyways, uh, we had a great service. But a full house, but what you, and, and, and just a nice article about the church and everything else. But I don't know um, if you just kind of pulled this way to see this handsome young man uh, right here by the name of Ivan. And, it, and the, the, the storyline is student scores big at national competition. Ivan's one of, our, one of ours, right? And uh, Ivan, I didn't, I didn't, you had an anger issue, huh, bro? Really bad, huh? And uh, if, if, if you're not here as a regular, Ivan usually sits, oh, about there on Sundays, and you've been coming for about nine months, ten months, and uh, the story talks about it, so I'm not relaying anything that is personal, but um, he was really struggling. And our partnership with, with the school, this is where those relationships pay off, folks. Um, basically, they, the school called us, asked if we would just spend some time with Ivan and Pastor Nick. Spent a lot of time, they even provided an office space for Nick over at the school so he could come and chat, and, and Ivan's been here now for several months, doing great, and so that's, that's the story, folks, and uh, so that's, that's good, that's great, see, so this was good, but I want you to stand up so people can see that you are actually a normal young guy. All right, very good. So we're proud of you. It's about changed lives, and, um, and that's what it's all about. All right, so it's Labor Day weekend, right? <laughs> no offense, but I think we should call it back to the routine weekend. Uh, and I know the union is probably be mad about something, but there's, you know, there's something to be said about routine. Now, some, some, not me, but some find routine very boring thinking that it's monotonous and, and laborsome, while others are happy to find a gear of uh, familiarity, right? And um, like, like this one, I believe the NFL kicks off this week, right? So for many, that is... Um, 
can I, let me just ask a question. Are, are, are there really any Raider fans left in the world? You know, I often wonder if Raider fans will be in heaven. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. The problem is, Charger fans, because of that baby blue thing, <laughs> not only will they not be in heaven, they won't be in the playoffs. So there you go. Right? Uh, that's, that's all there is. That's all there is to it right there. So that's how that works. So football kicks off, right? And then it's back to school. We've been there for a couple of weeks. And, and you know, if, if you want, uh, Costco today is selling Christmas wraps. So we're getting geared up for, for the holidays. You know, it's all about falling back into the routine. Fall is jumping back in, coming off of summer, right? That gives permission to do stuff differently. And, and fall is, 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 is predictable and and I don't know about you, I think of it really as a four-month block now between now and Christmas. There's so many things going on, and, uh, and I'm looking forward to. There are all kinds of things that I'm looking forward to in the next four months. There's also some things that I'm really hoping just go away in the next four months. How about you, right? Uh, many years ago, when Donna and I were, were dating, she said something to me that really, man, oh, it was beautiful. It was just so, so great. It, it, it has stuck with me, and it has motivated me ever since. Now, not wanting to leave you in suspense, and plus, because she's in the other room today and can't hear this, um, I'm going to tell you exactly what she said to me those many years. Um, Jeff, you know what? You know what I love about you. And you know, and that's that's just such a great way to start off any conversation. You know what I love about you, and and you know, I was feeling pretty good, and it was it was I I, I man, I can tell you exactly where we were driving. Her home on a Sunday night, we were on the highway, and she lived out of town, and I was driving her home. But you know what I love about you, Jeff? And I'm thinking, oh, man, this is good. Like, you know, you're handsome, or, uh, you know, I would have even taken that, you know, you're gentle. You know, I, I, girls say that to guys sometimes, and we look at you cross-eyed. We don't know what that means. Uh, but uh, she said, Jeff, you know what I love? You're so predictable. I, you see, I don't know what you do with that, right? You're... Praise Jesus. All right. I'm, uh... You know, I, I, I tease her about that statement today, and she defends it. I got to tell you, if you ask her on the way out today, did you tell Jeff he's predictable? And she'll go, oh, yeah, because he is. And she'll defend it like it was the greatest compliment that she could ever pay someone. Uh, now, being, being called predictable for me is like akin to being called boring. And uh, I, I've recognized that hindsight says practicality isn't all bad. And it's one of the reasons I think fall is, uh, you know, along with Christmas, my favorite time of year. Uh, you know, with lives full of activities, you've got stuff going on, events, commitments, responsibilities, uh, make it very conducive to fall into a routine. But unfortunately, many of us fall into a routine in the fall that is really kind of lacks any pizzazz. And eventually, we kind of feel like we're just going through the motions. And many of us, over the last few years, because of the economic downturn, we've really felt like we've been walking through the motions or going through the motions. Just, I, I read someone's uh, Facebook post the other day, and, and I was... Uh, I was burdened by it because they said, you know, just when we thought we were getting back up on our feet, wham! And I knew exactly what that person was saying. Now, folks, I've got to tell you that life in Christ was never meant to be a life that just goes through the motions. And nor was Peter convinced of this, and um, he didn't think that your life was to be just one big routine of predictability. Here's your memory verse this week. I really do hope you take some time to look at this verse, and it says this out of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. If you have your Bibles, this is one that you absolutely want to underline or highlight, okay? But here's the verse for you. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. I love that verse. I, I, I Actually, the first four words is really as far as we're really going to get today. 
Prepare your minds. Prepare your minds. Now, we often say this, uh, what's on your mind? Oh, not much. And that's exactly the problem. You see? And I hope that in regards to our spirituality, into our growth, into becoming a disciple of Christ, becoming a, a rooted believer and one that behaves in regards to the things that Christ has poured into our lives by way of the Holy Spirit, I would hope that if someone says, what's on your mind, we would say the good stuff. God's stuff would be on our minds today. Now, folks, every now and again, we think we're prepared for something, right? And then when it comes, oh boy, it was a lot harder than we thought, right? Have you ever had one of those moments? I had that moment last week, as a matter of fact. One of the hardest things I've ever had to do was to leave my daughter at college. That was a terrible moment for a dad. Excited for her, but terrible for me, right? She's happy. I wish she was miserable, but she's not. She's having the time of her life. <laughs> Come on. Shed a tear already, would you? No. Oh. You know, it was easy to pack. I mean, it took two cars, a U-Haul, and, you know, and, a, and a Sherpa, but we got there. The Sherpa was hard to find, by the way, but we got one. And we got everything there. That was all easy, but man, I... I oh. The, oh. Life's like that. We must be prepared. Therefore, prepare your mind for action. In other words, be ready to be thinking in a way that makes that moment a productive moment, a moment that can be redeemed or can be reclaimed that will be positive instead of a, of a negative in our lives. And this is what Scripture talks about all the time. Now, oftentimes, we believe that uh, just, it's just the New Age guys or the yoga guys that talk about the mind, but do you realize that Scripture talks about the mind all over the place? It is there, and I, that, that inspiration from the Lord is the foundation that other uh, faith movements or other um, thought processes have grabbed onto. You know, your mind is to be spiritual. And you're going, you haven't peaked in mind, have you? No, you're right, but the Holy Spirit does every day, by the way. Your mind is to be spiritual. It, it is to be holy. Do you remember that part of Scripture that says, Be holy as I am holy. Does that mean you're only to be holy in your acts, but not holy in your mind? Is that what we do? We separate? Just if we, if we act holy, but we don't think holy, then all's good? No, of course not. But sometimes we live that way. Sure. Um, it, is, it is to think and dwell on the great and amazing things of God's nature that he provides for us to enjoy and use as divine tools to serve others and his kingdom. So let me ask you this question. What are you preparing your mind to do today? What are you preparing to do that blesses his kingdom that blesses another here's a great verse it's one that i've uh, i've seen almost my whole life and you have too but philippians 4 8 this is another one you probably would want to underline and it says this finally brothers and because i'm an equal opportunist this morning finally brothers and bonnie um and sisters there we go that's what i really meant to say that just slipped out bonnie i'm sorry about that finally brothers whatever is what Whatever is, woo! No, I don't think so. Whatever is true! Whatever is noble! Whatever is right. Now, what's the arm signal for right? Is it, is it that or is it that? It's this, it's this one, right? Because you're driving, so left and right. There you go. So whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, I mean, see, I'm going back to think about all those things that Donna could have said. You know what I love about you, Jeff? None of these. None, none of these. You're so predictable. The only thing that we should get excited about in the predictability is the fact that God's grace is sufficient for all of us each and every day. And that's the great thing. We can count on God because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And because of that, then he can be counted on. And when we say, God, you're so predictable... 
He goes, well, yes, I am. I am consistent, and I am consistent in my love for you. Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy. And of course, you see, there's no room for the raiders here. Anything's excellent or praiseworthy. Think about such things. Think about such things. I like that. Think. There's an engagement. Think about such things. You see, we were called to use our mind in our faith. I already told you the New Age movement has grabbed all this stuff and they've run with it. Why? Because it's good stuff. But the thing is that, the, that some of these other faith movements have grabbed it without the sense of accountability or the sense of surrender. They say something like this, well, you know what? If I just think forgiving thoughts, then I will be forgiven. Well, that's nice and probably would make the world a slightly better place. That is incomplete. It's incomplete. And you know why it's incomplete? Because John 3.17 says, for, wait, wait, it's coming up here. Are we, are we going to get there? I know, I'm jumping ahead. There we go. It says, for God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, right? But through him it might be saved, or he would save the world through him. So you see, folks, when other faith uh, backgrounds grab at the things of God and they do not pull that which is essential to God's heart and nature and put that in front and you are to take that, ingest that, and dwell that in your life because He is there and allow that to be birthed through your soul and into your actions and into your mind, then they're missing something. Go back to that Romans verse that I am uh, jumping around on. Um, here's the problem about preaching on Saturday night. I change everything by Saturday, Sunday, night, Sunday morning, right? Here's this verse out of Romans, that's 8 to 5. It says this, Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what the nature desires, you see? And this is without a basis of faith in God, then we missing what is the nature of God. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what? Spirit desires. What does the Spirit desire in your life today? Well, I don't know. I'm not sure. Do you remember the list we just read about two minutes ago? Whatever is pure. Whatever is true. Whatever is lovely. Whatever is noble. I'm out of order, but it doesn't matter. See, we are to think on these things. What does the Spirit desire in your life? That you would engage your mind and that you would actually think on these things. Now, the problem is, we live in life. And we think, oh, that doesn't work for me because I'm not as spiritual as other people, so I'm more stuck in my junk. And, and somebody else can overcome, but I can't overcome because my junk is really big. Folks, yeah, your junk is big. I get it. It is. Your stuff is crazy. Your, the things that are going wrong are bad. All the garbage and all the baggage you're carrying around. I know you're stuck on the junk word, but get over it. Because whatever is pure, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is true, think on these things, you see. See, this needs to be redeemed as well. This needs to be changed. This needs to think beyond what nature has destroyed, what the evil nature has confused and taken another way. You see where it is? And, and, and that's the thing. When we fall into the routine of living there and not living where God has called us, where anything that's excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. But because we're so fixated on the problem that's in our lives, then you know what? We, we, guess what we're going to have? We're going to have a problem in our life. See, if we don't believe that God can make a difference, I'm pretty sure God's not going to make a difference. See, there's something to faith, right? To have faith, you must believe. But to be a disciple of Christ, you must behave. And to behave, you are called to think a certain way. And you're called to think righteously. You're called to think with right living. And I know that's hard because of all the unright living that goes on around you. Or someone else will say, well, how come you think your right living is better than my right living? And folks, I'm not getting into a spitting argument on this stuff. I just go to, well, 
then I just go on an authority that's been around a really long time and I work on that right living. And I don't think this is going to get me in trouble. Now, some of us go, well, I don't know, Jeff. I don't know. I don't know. No. It's not that I know. But the Spirit puts desires in your heart and your life. He does. He's doing that right now. You know what I love? Someone's going to come up to me today at the end of the service and going to say, Pastor Jeff, you were speaking to me this morning. And I'll go, oh yeah, what about? Oh, you were speaking about this and that's right where I'm living today. And God bless you. And then about a minute later, someone else will go, Pastor Jeff, you were speaking to me today. Oh yeah, what about? And they'll tell me and I'll go, oh, that's, that's interesting. And then someone else will also say, hey, you were speaking to me today. And I go, no, I wasn't. That was the Holy Spirit. What was he saying about this? And it made me, I, here's what I love. Eight or nine or ten or a hundred of you today are going to hear something completely different. And you know why? Because the Holy Spirit's putting a desire in your heart and your life, and he's talking to you. And he's talking to you right now. And you're processing as you're hearing the word and as we're going through this. And that's what I love about God. Because he doesn't just blanket this, he personalizes this, and he's talking to you. And that's what's so incredibly amazing. It's amazing. And because it's amazing, you know what? We need, to, we need to take a step back and look at all the stuff that we're whining and complaining about. Oh, I'm sorry. All the stuff that I'm whining and complaining about because I know you never do. So I'll just look at my laundry list. And then when I look at the stuff that I go, man, this is a crazy, crazy bunch of stuff. Then I have to say, God, you know what? <laughs> Some of this stuff is out of whack and out of balance with you. Then you know what? God, let's redeem this. Let's, let's put this and let's, let's move in this. Give me your desire for how you want me to work through this situation. And folks, when it says seek first the kingdom of God, this is what it was talking about. To seek after those things first and then all the other stuff would be given to you as well. This is so essential to our daily living. Here's, here's, the, deal. here's the deal. Deliberate spirituality produces God-intended acts of grace in your lives that blesses the natural socks off of you and, and cements a new foundation, a new formation, and a new pattern in our life. Folks, as we practice faith, it challenges us to behave and live that is supernaturally inspired. Did you hear that? As you practice faith, it challenges us to behave and live in that which is supernaturally inspired. I love that verse out of Philippians 4 8. What's true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable. You know, I want to live there. Right? That's, that's where I want to live my life. There. Because that, that doesn't sound like the way a lot of people are living their lives. And yet God's Word says, think on these things. Think about such things. You know, sometimes, um, sometimes you'll hear someone say, you know, you're going to go crazy if you, if you keep thinking that way. Well, that's, that's probably true. If, you're, if your life has worry and you're consumed with it, then you're probably a good shot going to become a worrier. Right? If your life is consumed with negativity and, and that's, that's all that you've got going on, then eventually your life is going to spout negativity. But God wants to redeem not just your soul, but He wants to work on that mind of yours, that which you're thinking. And He wants to put His spirit desires in it. Why? So that you can live the life that you were born to live. That's why. That's what it's about. Here's a great verse uh, that was that. Uh, well, it's called the Golden Rule. Some people don't even know this is in Scripture, but do to others as you would have them do to you. The Boy Scouts do that. Most people think that's just a Boy Scout saying. It's not. That's the Great Commandment. That is from the Word of God. Do to others. Now the problem is, if we don't know how, if we don't activate our mind to do to others then how, how do we know what it is that we're supposed to do? 
We're supposed to have mental diligence and moral discipline, but if they don't come together, then it just seems like maybe our lives at times or our faith, that which we are trying to live is, feels empty, or we start saying stuff like this, you know what, I, I've just kind of lost that love and feeling, Jeff. I hear that often, by the way, where people say, I don't know, I'm serving Jeff, you know, I'm doing a lot of stuff, and I get that. Or I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ministering as best as I can. Folks, when, when our belief and our practice don't somehow line up with our behavior and that which we think in our lives, then there is going to be a schism. There is going to be something that's broken that, that they just don't, they're close, but they just don't quite meet. The beauty is when they do meet, then the routine of life is no longer ordinary, but it becomes extraordinary. Because when that comes together and it is practiced in your life, that life that you're living and that life that you think doesn't matter much tomorrow, you're going to go to that job and no one knows your name there or you're going to go to that place and you're going to visit a bunch of clients and they all don't seem to care or whatever. But, but you know, it matters to God. It matters that as you not only think on these things, but you live these things and you demonstrate these things and you give these things away, guess what happens? Then you begin to make an influence for the kingdom and you actually begin to do that which He's called us all to do, to be salt and light wherever we are. Now sometimes we think my space doesn't matter enough for salt and light. Oh yes, it does. Don't buy the lie that it doesn't matter. Next week, we're going to kick off a new series, and I always say my, my, that, that the next series is the best series, and I believe that. We're going to start a, a series on excuses next week. I've got 18. I'm trying to pare it down to nine, all right? I've got a list of 18 right now, and if you come on Wednesday night, man, I'm going to have you help me choose those uh, that we're going to work through, all right? So if you're at the coffee house on Wednesday night, I know you could be going to spiritual care, and that would be great if you've signed up for spiritual care on Tuesday mornings or Wednesday nights. You can be there. And I know we got stuff all over the place. It's not to keep you busy, but it's to help you not only believe, but behave according to what the Spirit's desire is in your life, right? Here's a question for you. Don't answer out loud, out loud because it would, could incriminate you, right? You don't want to live a routine Christian life, do you? I don't. Because the routine lacks the spontaneity of God's grace showing up in my life. When God's grace shows up in my life, you know what I'm, I'm pretty good at doing? And I bet you are too. I'm pretty good about telling that to others and showing that to others and giving it to others. The spontaneity of His grace. Now, the rest of that verse out of, out of Peter talks about upon... Um, on Christ's return, when, when Christ was revealed to you, when you accepted Him as Lord and Savior into your life, He did come in. Right? He did come. His Spirit lives within you. And that's why it's so important that we do not deny what the Spirit wants to speak or His desires in our life. And that's why if we just flood our mind with stuff, and miss out on that which is pure and right and true. And you know the crazy thing is some people will hear that list and go, that just sounds so dull. See, that's how, that's how crazy it's all become. That which is good has become bad, and that which is bad is just bad. And we've just kind of lost sight or have any moral bearing. Oh boy, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, each one of you it's been made for such a huge divine purpose. You really do. You really have. Until you really embrace that and believe it, you're going to struggle with that. You're going to kind of struggle getting that going in emotion. And stuff's going to come along and that's going to sidetrack you. The scripture's pretty clear that the, the devil's out there like a roaring lion. Now, sometimes there are excuses the devil's out there like a roaring lion. Folks, may I remind you that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So when you see the devil out there as a roaring lion, go, eh, he's up to his old tricks. 
but my mind is prepared for action. I see the trick, and I'm not going to allow myself to go there again. Oh, really? Yeah, really. Really. You know, today, um, at 4 o'clock, we're, we're doing a wedding out in Ventura. So we got we got to jam out of here in a little bit, right? Yeah, I really do. Um, here's the deal. You know, when you're engaged, you make all kinds of plans for the big day, right? You get stuff ready, you, 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 know, you, you get the chairs ready, you get the place where you're going to have the ceremony, you, you line up someone like me to do it, uh, you, you, you maybe go for counseling, and you, and you, and you buy a dress, and, and, and the guy rents a, a, a you know, $100 suit. Isn't that weird? Just shows you how, how, how this works. You know, the woman spends $19 million on a dress, and the guy, the guy wears a $100 rental. <laughs> Nothing says temporary like the $100 rental. Like, seriously, think about that. Just doesn't make sense. She's in it for keeps. He's renting. And um, he can always rent again in five years. I think that's part of the problem. You see, I think that's where we are. I think guys are getting married. Buy your suit, all right? Invest in it. Go for it. Easy for me to say because I rent it. Anyways, um, <laughs> we make plans in light of the future wedding. That's, that's, that's what you do. As Christians, we're to make plans in light of the living grace that's been extended to us because of Jesus Christ, because he's come in. That's the way we are to live. We are called to make plans. We're not just called to see, oh, whatever happens will happen. The case sera, sera. That's bogus. That's bogus. You know what? God will surprise you every now and again, but I'll tell you, if your mind isn't prepared for action, you're probably going to miss the surprise. Prepare your mind. And how do you prepare? You put His tools into place. You put the Spirit's desires in play. You take that which is true and noble and pure and excellent, all that stuff, and you begin to live those things in your life. If you've got your connection card, if you go ahead and take that out today. And on the front side, if you're our guest, thanks so much for, for being with us. We'd love for you to take a moment to fill out that information on the front side. If you'd let us know if this is your first or second time with us, we appreciate that. And, and regular attenders and members, we do want to hear from you too. We've noticed that some of our regular attenders and members, we have bad data for you. And we've updated our whole database this past year, but you have changed a phone number, you've gotten a new cell, or you've changed an email address, and that kicks back to us, we've got some bad data. And so... If you would fill one of these out as well and give us your data, that is greatly, greatly appreciated. But on the back side, I want to direct your attention to next steps today. First of all, we've got the memory verse out of 1 Peter 1.13. It's a great verse. Therefore, prepare your mind for action. That's as far as we got today. It's a great verse. The rest of the verse is very good as well, but that's as far as we got today. Um, I've got some extra reading for you. And I've got three things that I would love for you to consider. And I believe the Spirit's desire for you would to be moving in this direction. Number one, I am choosing to align my mind with His character. In other words, I'm going to put His good character into my life. There's ways to do that. There's through the Word. There's, 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 there's praying. There's also not only fellowshipping in church, but it's also driving home today and when you get cut off inevitably somewhere along today today where you don't go ah, you ah, can't say what you say is that what you say i'll see you later that's very i got a hundred i tell you what i got a 151 mile drive here in a little bit i'm gonna have plenty of opportunities to bless someone instead of curse them how about you bless some of the people that absolutely drive you crazy. And that will include the absolute ignorant that you're even blessing them, all right? You bless them. You bless them. What happens when you begin to bless people? Then the pure and the lovely and, the, and that which is true starts to come out of your life. 
curse doesn't come, but blessing comes. And when something crazy happens in your life, instead of getting all crazy about it, you can stand back for a minute and say, God, I didn't expect that, but no surprise to you, right? See, it just changes the way we think. I will set my mind to align with His character. Secondly, I will ready myself to demonstrate. (laughs) I love this. To demonstrate, to practice His character in the routines of life. So many of you are excited your kids are going back to school, but you sure hate going out the door at 7.15 to get them there. And you guys get snappy at the breakfast table or at the granola bar or whatever it is on the way to school. Practice blessing your children as they go out that door. Practice blessing those people that cut in on you on the drop-off line or aren't getting out fast enough. Sometimes I wonder, what are they doing in there? They're usually texting or, or they're getting another sip of coffee. And probably the three seconds I would have gained had they moved faster, I'm not sure it would have been that much better for me. But see, we begin to practice. And finally, I will expect the grace of God. Ooh, this is because He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I will expect the grace of God to bring about the extraordinary in my life. You were made for so much more. That's a Switchfoot song. But they got the inspiration from the Word of God. You were made for so much more. And when you do not set your heart on the Spirit's desires, then you're largely getting the way you're thinking. But if you begin to put it on where the Spirit lives in your life, and on the things that He wants you to have in your life, the extraordinary happens. It's not my promise for you, but it's God's. It's God's promise for you. If you've got that card filled out, we are going to receive that. If you are at the end of the aisle, if you pick up that bucket, pass that along the aisle. An usher will be by to pick that up for you. Here as we close this service. And here's the last question before we close in prayer today. Well, there's actually two questions. First, if you've never, ever considered having the mind of Christ in your life. If you've never sensed or known that the Spirit has desires for you. You've never wondered or you've never considered that that there's more to just forgiveness than thinking about it, but there's actually receiving it. You see? Then this is your moment. This is your moment to take a next step. If you've not yet if you've not yet decided to follow Jesus, to accept Him as your Lord and Savior, to ask Him to forgive you of sins, because that's why He sent His Son. Not to condemn the world, but to save the world, right? If you've not yet made that decision, you can right now. You might have checked it off on the card, but I do like to ask the question, is there anyone in this service this morning that's ready to Except Jesus is their Lord and Savior. Is anybody? Just looking around. I'm just taking a moment. Is there anybody in this service this morning? Oh, I'm a little surprised by that. But you know what? I know this is a difficult decision. We're going to pray in just a moment. And if, if you knew you were supposed to raise your hand and you didn't, you can still come. We'd love to pray with you. Just tell one of my prayer friends right up here at the front. They'll be waiting for you to pray. By the way, prayer friends, this would be a great time for you to join me right here. All right? If you come this way. And the last thing is this. Maybe maybe as you're trying to prepare your mind for action, there's roadblocks that you see and there's, there's maybe even some negative thinking that are going on, excuses that you've built up for yourself and, and you would just like to come alongside someone today and, and have them pray with you. And it's, it's um, sometimes difficult to pray when we're stuck and you, and you need someone else to help, help kind of encourage that along. And then pretty soon that's unlocked and you can pray. But oftentimes we just don't even know where to begin. And I suspect there are many of you in that case today and so we don't want to miss any of you. And so in just a moment, we're going to invite you to come this way for prayer. But first, I'm going to have you stand to your feet. I'm going to pray a prayer benediction. 
And before I say amen, I'm going to invite those of you that are coming for prayer to come. Father God, I thank you for each and every one that is here today. God, I know your grace is sufficient for each and every one of us. And Lord, as we prepare our mind for action, that God, we would recognize that there is so much, Lord, that your Spirit desires for us. And Lord, from the Father's heart, you have made us all with a divine purpose. We live in a, in a broken world, but you have a spiritual purpose on each and every one of these lives. And Lord, as we engage the mind, prepare it for action, then God, then we put ourselves in a place to begin to hear and see the opportunities of grace that are before us. That you are asking us to walk in and move in, in redeemed. In the sense that we move in with purity. We move in with right thinking and with truth. We don't try to do it our way, we try to do it your way. God, all over this room there are plans. There are plans that you have all over this room. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of plans. God, may your thinking be our thinking today. In Jesus' name. Before I say amen, if you're coming for prayer, the worship team is going to begin to, to lead us in song. If you're coming for prayer, would you come this way? Before you start exiting, let's give a moment for people that are coming for prayer to have the aisles clear. If you're coming, would you come this morning? God bless you. It is great to see you today. The worship team is going to lead us at this, at this time. Thanks for being here. A million things going on on Wednesday. Hope to see you out. God bless you. Thanks for being here. Amen. Open the flood gates of hell.